yeah. how can you use a mechanism that is supposed to help and defend minorities against these this minority? You're talking about the petition of concern in the Northern Ireland yes, Assembly, sorry. and of course that was given to the parties in Northern Ireland by Tony Blair. So in his wisdom, he handed out this veto to parties to use as they will, and uh, all the to parties... To use it to protect minorities? No, no, uh, to use as they will, and all parties have used that veto on numerous occasions, almost 100 occasions, okay. for various pet projects and for various issues. Now, the, the key issue here, here is, should Northern Ireland follow suit? I say very, very strongly, and it's not about my personal opinions, it's about the political law, and about law of the land. If there is a Northern Ireland Assembly in place, where powers devolve to it, that assembly should be up and running, and it should make the laws and the, and the legislation of, of, for the country. That's respecting devolution, as we do in Scotland, Wales, and for the rest of the UK. If it's broken, as it currently is at the present time, we either put all our effort into fixing the assembly and letting the assembly function and let it take the decision, or else we do what you've suggested there, we take everything back to Westminster. And we legislate okay, for it. And if, I would have to accept the law of the if land. If and when, I, I know negotiations are going on right now. You and Sinn Féin are still trying to, to work out whether a power yeah. sharing agreement can still. That's um, a great prize to try and achieve. When, when and if that happens, what then? Where will the DUP stand if there was another vote on, on same sex marriage? Uh, well, we've made it clear in our manifesto that actually we would vote against changing the marriage law. Now, there's another way of addressing this, and I've suggested we could have a referendum in Northern Ireland. And if Northern Ireland decide to have a referendum on this issue, we would then implement the will of the people. So there's various ways in which we can address all sorts of social and political issues. But at the present time, we respect the law. And the law is that uh, politicians have decided it this way. If the law were, were to change or if politicians wanted to change that, they could do that. Well, but the greater voted price... For it. They voted for it in um, 2015. Yeah. Five times they voted and finally they yes. got it through. And Tony DUP Blair... Stood, and the DUP stood it... Tony Blair that. handed them a veto. Now, maybe we need to change that. But you can't hand out these things and say these rules apply when it's all going our way. But whenever you do something in the largest party in Northern Ireland that we don't like, oh, you must change the law. Uh, you know, you can't have it both ways. It's but are you mi work. misrepresenting the mass of the public who have said clearly that they prefer that same-sex marriage be a law. I mean, to use the veto is a bit thuggish, isn't it? It sounds well, like a bully. It's, well, it's Tony Blair handed the veto. Well, well, you you, didn't have you to keep saying it. Tony Blair, yeah. but we're, he's to not here it. today. Yeah, You're he, here. He, he's not, and the, and the Northern Ireland Assembly, of which I'm not, no longer a member of it, has the right to do this thing. So therefore, Scott, the issue is we change the entire package. Now, if we get into that type of a negotiation, there's lots of things I'll change about the present arrangements we have. The fact of the matter is the government knows that if they intervene in Northern Ireland on one single issue, which for many people is a priority, for many others it is not, but if they intervene on one single issue, the unintended consequences of that is that then I'll have issues that I want them to intervene on and change, other parties will have other issues, and it will become a catastrophe. Far better we put our efforts into getting the Assembly up and running again, and then we address these issues. Well, when will that happen? The sooner, I'm ready, as I said earlier, <laughs> ready today. Let's get an Assembly on. I'm not stopping it, it's actually Sinn Féin are stopping it. Ian, what's your, what's your personal view? I mean, you, you have spoken out against... I have, and, and ever since the then, ever since view? then, I've taken the view that, you know something? My personal views will be crass to some people and will be supported by others. I'm a lawmaker, and I have to actually try and put in place laws that reflect the general view of the people. And for me to express my personal views, I, I take a, 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 a very strong stand on this personally. But I try. Why is that? But I try. Why, why are you so well, against well, it? Because it's obviously, it's yeah. obviously um, falls into. It's, it stems so it's into my moral value your, and my moral your code. Political will as well. Well, well no, what, it falls into my moral values and my moral code. And other people have different moral values, values and different moral code. And I've tried to say, I'm no longer going to try and express views that we might hurt people or offend people. I'm trying to take a course of action, which is the legal course of action for people to so, address. So why, why, why? What is the basis of you being against this? This is the only, you, well, Northern Ireland, well, the only I've, home nation which doesn't allow this. Well, I've, I've told you Northern very, very the clearly. the first place a civil marriage yeah. took, yeah, took yeah, place. Yeah, absolutely. So this? And I've told you very, very clearly that there's a mechanism to try and change this. Your personal that view, could, so why, that, that why, could personally, be done. Personally, why can't you back this? What, well, what I, I believe that marriage, that marriage is about an institution of the state that is about creating a society where men and women marry to create children and to bring them up in, in, in that process. And there's many then families that don't are married couples that are, are, are familyless yeah. and that can end up being offensive to them. So there's a whole host of reasons. But I take the view that marriage was instituted yeah. by God for those reasons to create a stable society. And 
I don't mean to offend people by saying that, but that is my view. It's a view of very, very many people of my constituents and of my country. The point is, we have a process now and a system where if people want to change it, they can, but it's through politics. It just makes Northern Ireland seem backward. You must see that. It just makes it, with the abortion and the gay marriage thing, it just makes it seem so long ago. Also, the referendum thing I'm opposed to, I think marriage is a civil right not a religious one. You can bring God into it if you want, but actually it's a civil right offered by the government. It's a contract put before two people. And when you let people vote on civil rights, you've put danger involved in the situation. Because I understand the if, 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 like if you were to say, I'm a, if you were to say, or anyone were to say, I'm opposed to say people from different races marrying, we'd all be offended as we should be. And what you're saying is in a referendum, we're opposed to this, but we're gonna let you decide if it's okay for your neighbors to get married. I think the government needs to step in. Obviously, Northern Ireland is behaving like teenagers. They can't agree, they can't decide, they're just gonna fight and Dawn, argue forever. Dawn, what do you, what do you think? I, I, I think I should just let these two get a room. <laughs> um, I think I, Theresa May has to step in. The thing about Brexit is, is putting all these important issues that actually affect people's daily lives aside so these polit po political leaders can fight but over power. But if she steps in. There's other consequences. Why do we just? I mean, she's this, already this, given you so much money. She stepped in yeah, already. But, but There's only on, one on. reason why you're the, there in power. This issue is incredibly important. Because she handed you all that cash. This issue, for a whole host of reasons, is incredibly important to you. For lots of other people, there's other issues that are much more important. So if she steps in on this, she must step in on other issues. That's well, the maybe, if maybe she needs to. If Theresa May steps in, could it risk the um, um, supply of confidence? that you have. Well, well, you know, why would she just step in on one issue? We're asking her, and this might, might, be, this, this this might encourage you, we're that? saying to her, the, the if there's no government up? established in Northern Ireland now, step in and let Westminster re legislate on all things. We would support that, but that's called direct rule. The government knows there's consequences with that on the ground in Northern Ireland that they maybe fear. Mm. Um, Storm. We've got Steve calling from London. Um, Steve, um, what are your thoughts on same-sex marriage in Northern Ireland? Well, despite my accent, I'm actually from Belfast. Um, I, I find it incredible that the DUP still block this all the time. Uh, Theresa May, by the way, incidentally voted against repealing Section 28. So they've got an ally there, which they bought or sold or whatever. But, you know, when you look at this, if you, as Scott rightly said, if you replace this with mixed uh, race or you said Polish people or you said black people aren't allowed to marry... It wouldn't be acceptable. So why is it fine to say that to homosexual people? From Northern Ireland, we get people firebombed out of their houses because they're not Northern Irish. It's time to stop this, create equality for all, safety for all, and a society that moves forward. Northern Ireland comes so far, and it's brilliant, but it's got so much further to go. Steve, let me put that to Ian. And Ian, don't go blaming Tony Blair again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I know, I know he is to blame, but, but uh, that's one thing. Look, the fact of the matter is, it is not an argument about mixed race. This isn't an argument, an argument about the institution of marriage. And it, it's not an issue of race. And it's easy to introduce it and say, oh, it's about racism. But he's saying uh, that because it's a civil right. Yeah, I, I understand. The that's point. what he's saying. But I'm, I'm saying he's keeping religion wrong. out of it. You're actually wrong. And I, well, I didn't introduce the race issue. And I, I, I think, therefore, it's wrong to introduce that as well, because that is not what this is about. It's about a civil right. That's what he's saying. It's about the right for people to be together, whoever they are. And it's about the DUP holding the government hostage over this issue that but, they think but, they can control not, the entire I think, I think it's actually unfair to suggest. It, that we're, it, that we're, that we're, how a, it feels to people. It may feel, but, but that feeling is wrong. And you've got to accept that sometimes yeah. those feelings are wrong. And it's incredibly important to Your feelings are wrong you. to me about your feelings yeah. about gay it's, marriage. It's, what I'm saying I'm, is... I'm not, I'm not, not introducing my feelings into this. I'm, you, just saying where, I'm saying where the law is. And the law is there's a way of changing the, the, Ian, the, the, the Steve, laws in Northern Steve Ireland. from Belfast, yeah? and he says he's not going back because of this law. I'd say there's a whole host of reasons why Steve isn't going back. Perhaps he's well, a job here, Steve, family here, Well, let's ask him, Steve, are there any other reasons why you're not going back? I doubt if it's just the one issue. Because of this issue on same-sex marriage. I, I actually, I work in the LGBT community. I represent loads of people in charities and stuff like that. I won't go back because I don't feel equal. It's not a case of the troubles and things like that. I find, as I say, Northern Ireland has come forward. It's changed with my accent. I don't get the, the sort of second glances I used to get. And yes, I'm from the West. And I won't go back to Belfast because I would not be allowed to have an equal life. So why would I go somewhere? Why would I go to Russia where I wouldn't get an equal life? It's just not possible, and it has to change.